I hope you can tell by what I have on the table here what we're going to talk about today. Hey YouTube, Danny here from DTC. If this is your first time here, we frequently talk about hardware reviews, how-tos, and PC builds. Today we're going to talk about Ryzen CPUs, more specifically the cooler solutions that are out there for them. So let's take a look. Okay, first I'll explain what I moved into this process for. Uh, I got this, the Ryzen 5 3600, a couple months ago. It comes with the Wraith Stealth Cooler. It's this one here, real slim profile. I think AMD, since their Ryzen series has started, has done a great job with the cooler design on these. It looks a lot better than Intel, and in fact, I think it does a way better job than what Intel's box coolers do. Intel's been using the same coolers for years, and as much as I love Intel, their cooler design is just terrible. It's, it's hideous, it doesn't do really well, it's not, it doesn't have enough heat sink to really dissipate any heat. The processor I'm using is the 3600, and this is the cooler solutions that I'm trying out here today. First up is the Wraith Stealth, as I said, it comes in the box with the 3600, the 3300X, and the 3100. The processors that I'm listing are all the newest gen processors that are out. Uh, I didn't bother listing the 2000 series or 1000 series Ryzen's, but um, you can always check it out on AMD's website. They have a whole chart of it. The Wraith Stealth comes in at 172.9 grams. Like I said, it is their slimmest, smallest profile cooler that they have. All the weights that I've got are given uh, without the fans installed, so this is just the weight of the heat sink by itself. Next up is the Wraith Spire. It comes in at 323.2 grams. So you can see already it's a much thicker, almost double the size heat sink as the Wraith Stealth. The Wraith Spire comes with the 3600 XT or the 3600X. The last AMD cooler that I have here is the Wraith Prism. This one comes with the 3900X, the 3800X, and the 3700X. It comes in at 394.1 grams. So you can see it is the heaviest cooler that AMD offers, and this is why it comes with all their high-end processors. But uh, it comes with this uh, copper section on the bottom and then heat pipes coming out the sides that, that flow through the fins as well. Copper's a real good conductor of heat, so that's, that's what they've used to, to dissipate the heat in these high-end coolers. It also comes with a RGB fan on the top of it here, and that plugs directly into a, an RGB header on your motherboard. Now you don't need to plug in the RGB header, you can let it run on its automatic mode. And the last cooler I have is actually a aftermarket cooler. I wanted to get something to kind of show what the difference is if you purchase a cooler versus using one of AMD's stock coolers just to, to show the increase. This is the Dark Rock Slim. It is a 180 watt TDP. It's, it's actually pretty simple to install. It comes with all the hardware you need. It can be used for pretty much any socket, AMD or Intel. But it, as you will see later, it comes at a cost, which these do not have as great of a cost. Okay, we'll take a look at the benchmarks. I'll kind of throw them up at the screen while I'm explaining each uh, cooler kind of in depth and then numbers that I got from each thing as well as like uh, style points and noise and all that. I'm kind of, kind of going to go through the whole gambit of each thing while you can check out the um, stats. The AMD Wraith Stealth that comes with the 3600 is the first one up. Like I said, it's included in the box. Its style is great, uh, just like I said, way better than Intel. The noise gets kind of annoying. It, uh, because it's so small, it has to ramp up and down to keep the cooling going good. So idle temps on the 3600 with the Wraith Stealth cooler were around 50C. Uh, like I said, anything going in the background, as soon as something would pop up, the CPU obviously was utilized and then the fan had to ramp up to cool it almost instantly. I set a custom fan profile curve and it's the same curve for all these fans. That way it was pretty normalized and I didn't do it real aggressive or anything like that. It's it's pretty it's a pretty linear curve. I did testing using Unigen Heaven, uh, Cinebench R20 and Blender. 
Using Unigen Heaven, it was a 20% load on low setting so that I would put a max stress on the CPU as opposed to the GPU. The CPU was running at 65C on Unigen Heaven and then Cinebench R20, it was running at 84C and Blender, it ran at 86C. Uh, that's, like I said, pretty much out of the box settings. I really didn't tweak anything. I just kind of made the curve uh, smooth. But yeah, like I said, uh, Wraith Stealth out of the box, 84C and 86C. That's uh, now Blender and Cinebench put a lot of stress on the CPU. It puts 100% on all cores. So this is like the worst case scenario. And that's why I threw Unigen Heaven in there because a lot of people game at 1080p and uh, that's kind of a good representation pretty much no matter what CPU or pretty much no matter what GPU you have, your CPU can be taxed about that much at 1080p settings. Um, but I wanted to create that kind of stress. So moving over to the Wraith Spire, uh, it's pretty much the same design as the Wraith Stealth. It looks like they use almost the same fan, maybe a little bit different design. But uh, like I said, the heat sink is double the size. So noise is way better than with the Wraith Stealth. It doesn't ramp up and down. Like I said, same fan curve, but you, as soon as you have a little bit of load, you don't have that ramp up and ramp down like you did with the Wraith Stealth. Much quieter at idle and even under like a light load. The idle temps were around 40 C, so almost 10, actually about 10 degrees cooler than the Wraith Stealth was. All the same usages. I, I saw quite a change with everything. On Unigen Heaven, it was about 54C for the same, you know, 20% load and everything like that, low settings, as opposed to the 65 on the Wraith Stealth. And uh, Cinebench R20 ran at 77C and Blender was 79C. So we're already under 80C just from swapping the cooler to something like the Stealth to the Spire. Next thing up is the Wraith Prism. Give it to AMD style points wise. The Wraith Prism looks really good. It's a boxier design than the Wraith Stealth or the Wraith Spire, but uh, it has that RGB bling. So if that's something that you're really interested in, doing RGB to match your, your style on your build, uh, the Wraith Prism has that RGB effect to it. Now, more wiring could be a negative to you because you have to include the RGB header that has to go from the fan to one of your headers on your motherboard to be able to actually control the RGB unless you wanna just plug in the fan, let it do its rainbow effect and, and you're fine with that. But if you want it to match all your fans in your case, then you have to plug into a header on your motherboard. There's a reason why all the high-end CPUs include this cooler with it from the factory. And that's because uh, the temperatures. Oh, real quick though, the noise on this thing is ridiculous. When it ramps up full speed, it sounds like a jet engine taken off. That is the biggest negative with this thing. I, I didn't like the noise whatsoever. At idle, it's fine. It's pretty quiet at idle. Idle temperatures on the 3600 with the Wraith Prism were 33C. That's the lowest out of all three of these things so far. Really incredible. Uh, Unigen Heaven was 52C. Now again, this is all set to the same, you know, it was about 20% uh, load, low settings, same GPU. I used the Asus uh, GTX 1660 Super. So performance on Cinebench R20 and Blender was uh, 72C and 74C respectively, which is really good. Way better than the Stealth, the Spire, obviously the best performance AMD cooler you can get. And then finally, the Dark Rock Slim aftermarket cooler. This cooler gets style points way beyond OEM in my opinion. I think that looks great in the build with a case. Let's talk about noise. The, the thing is, I mean, be quiet. It's perfect for their name because that thing is silent. At 100% fan speed, you can barely hear it. It doesn't have as high of an RPM. So hence the name, be quiet. Idle temperature was 32C and uh, 54C for the same usage on Unigen Heaven. Cinebench R20 and Blender were 71C and 73C really, really quiet. It got pretty much the same temperatures, like I said, as the Prism, but uh, there was no noise whatsoever. Even at, at load, you really didn't hear the thing. At idle, it's completely silent. I, you don't have any noise. Okay, let's talk about price for value with these things, because obviously that's something that's on everybody's mind, and that's kind of the reason I wanted to point this out to you. If you're running a Ryzen series processor, a 3600, a 3700, 
Um, it, it really doesn't matter. You can be running pretty much any of them that don't require liquid cooling, like the the 3900 XT and the 3950X, those high-end processors, they don't even come with a cooling solution because AMD recommends liquid cooling for those things. But as far as the AMD style coolers, the OEM coolers, you can pick these things up, like I said, on pretty much any used parts site. If you buy the 3600 and you get the Wraith Stealth with it, I mean, it's a fine cooler. It, it works, it does its job. And like I said, from the charts, it does run hot under extreme workloads, but if you're buying it for gaming and everything, you're probably not gonna be using it for that type of stuff anyways. But uh, I'm just giving you an option of something. I recommend the Wraith Spire just because you can pick these up for fairly cheap. They're not as readily available as the Prism though. The Prism I'm seeing everywhere. I got on, you can look on eBay, OfferUp, Craigslist, uh, any use sites, and they're, they're up there everywhere. eBay has them all the time for like, 20 to $30 you can get them for, and that, that's ship. If you can find it locally, you can usually offer less. You can be like, hey, will you take 15 bucks or something like that? Maybe you can even get it for 10 bucks. $10 to go from this cooler to this cooler is a tremendous upgrade. Now, like I said, the noise is pretty loud at heavy workloads and stuff, but no louder than this Wraith Stealth is gonna be. The cooling performance, the chart speaks for itself and the testing and everything. But most times you go to pick these uh, coolers up, they've never even been installed. So they still have the thermal paste on the bottom of them. So if you can find one that hasn't been used, still has the thermal paste and you just slap it on, you're ready to go. And you've got the RGB bling and the, the better cooling performance. Another thing we can talk about with value and price is these aftermarket coolers like the Dark Rock Slim. Cooler Master has the Hyper 212 Black Edition. It's real clean looking and everything. It doesn't look as bad as their older 212 Evos that they had. This The Black Edition is just a black fan and a black cooler and everything. It kind of matches a lot of motherboards better. The Hyper 212 Evo was very flashy and bright. It had that aluminum fin stack. Some people don't want that, some people do. But anyways, the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Black comes in at $39.99. So if you can't find one of these AMD solutions, the Hyper 212 will probably be a better bet uh, price-wise if you're gonna be paying $40 or something for this type of cooler anyways. This really only applies to the 3600s because the 3700s come with this cooler. So you'd be more than fine slapping this cooler in with the 3700 and it's gonna, it's gonna cool just as good. Like I said, the performance equals the, the prism on the Dark Rock Slim. As far as my opinion on the cooler itself, you get better perform or you get the same performance, but you get better styling than this in my opinion, and you get a quieter uh, noise level and, and whatnot. So that's what you're really paying for. You're p paying for the style points and the noise that it puts out. And then it's still good performance. It's just as good as the Prism, but you're getting those other benefits included with it. Is it worth the $60? That's gotta be up to you. I'll leave a link down in the description if you wanna check out the Dark Rock Slim. Okay, so closing everything up. If you've bought the Ryzen 5 3600 and you have this cooler, the, the Stealth, and you're running this right now, have you noticed that it's noisier than you would like or it runs hotter than you would want it to run? I applied this to one of my builds with the stock thermal compound that was on it and I was just, I was unhappy with the performance out of it. I thought it ran too hot for my taste. So uh, this is why I looked into these other options and I happen to have every single one of these here in the studio. So I said, why not? I might as well try it. I don't think the Wraith Stealth is adequate for what the 3600 puts out as far as heat. I would recommend to upgrade to the Spire or the Prism, depending on what you want. If you want better performance, the Prism is your go-to for this. If you want quieter noise levels, but decent performance bump over the Stealth, the Spire is the one that I would choose. If you can find it at a reasonable price, it's a great deal to pick up and throw on your 3600 to just bump that performance up a little bit better. I hope this was able to help you with your own build at home, and don't forget to subscribe down below for more videos just like this one. Also, if you want a deeper dive into DTC, you can check us out on Twitter at Danny's Tech YT. I'm Danny with Danny's Tech Channel, and I'll see you all in the next one. Stop.